um, this is what makes a harmonic function, pretty much, right there. That's the important thing to look at. Continuous second partials and satisfies this equation right here, uxx plus uyy equals zero. Okay, and they give you a few examples. Um, one important thing is this right here. If we have, so let's suppose that F is holomorphic. Okay, so if F is U plus IV, then Holomorphic means the cauchy riemann equations are going to be satisfied. So ux is equal to vy. And also you have U, uy is equal to negative vx, right? So those are the cauchy riemann equations. Okay, if you take, um, so these are true. These, these are holes right here. Okay, so that's just cauchy riemann equations. Okay, now if you, let's suppose that we take this equation right here and we take the partial of x again on both sides. Then that means that this is going to be v y x, right? And then if we take the partial with respect to y, that means uyy is going to be negative v xy. But this is the same as yx, right? So it doesn't matter the order. Okay, so here you're taking x first, then y. Here you're taking y first, then x. But that doesn't matter which order you do. So if you look at both of these equations, if you take uxx plus uyy, well, uxx is this one, vyx, and then uyy is this, and those add up to zero. Okay, so this means that u is harmonic. And also, um, you can do a similar thing to say V is also harmonic. I'm not going to go through the, the details, but you could show that also from here. Just take the partial of this with respect to Y of both sides, and take this one with respect to X both sides, and you'll get that V, um, v XX plus VYY is going to be zero. So those are both harm harmonic. Okay, so essentially um, that is this last proposition at the bottom. If u and v, so if f is u plus iv is holomorphic, then u and v are both from, are each harmonic. So each one of those functions is harmonic. And notice that it's a, it's a real valued function. These are real valued functions. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do let's um show that <clears throat> u equals e to the two y cosine two x is harmonic. Okay, so how would you show that? Do you guys remember the definition of harmonic that I just said, or you have forget already? Ux x plus y equals to zero. Yes. 
So this is so what you want to do is show u x x um, plus u y y equals zero. Okay, so what u u x for this function? Um, negative b to the two y sine two uh, x times two. Yes, good. And then what's u x x? Negative four e to the two y cosine two x. Good. So that's that that one. And then um, you, you want to that's u x x. I'm going to find u y y. And u y is going to be what? E uh, two times e to the two y cosine two x. And the next derivative. Four times e to the two y cosine two x. Good. And if you add these together, zero. You're gonna get this plus this, right? Yeah. Which adds up to zero. Yay. Okay, that's the first part. Second part would be b, um, find a whole, an entire, we'll say entire function f such that the real part of f is equal to u. Okay, so here's the thing, if you have a, an, a if you have a harmonic function, then it's going to be the real part of some holomorphic function, by the way. Okay, so this function, this function u is the real part to a entire function in this case, because this is harmonic everywhere. So it'll be, um, it'll be the real part of an entire function if it's harmonic everywhere. So a, a function that's holomorphic and everywhere. In the entire complex plane. Okay, so we know that ux has to be equal to vy from the Cauchy Riemann equations, right? But we know this is also uh, ux, right? ux is right here. So that means that vy has to be negative 2 e to the 2y sine 2x. Okay, so that means that if we if we take the antiderivative with respect to y, what's that going to be? Negative e to the two y. Yes. Sine x. Perfect. We also know that um, u y has to be negative vx, which means that vx is negative uy, which means it is the negative of 2 e to the 2y cosine 2x. And so if this is vx, so we take the take an antiderivative with respect to um, x. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to I'm, I forgot to mention is that when you do this right here, you could have a function in x. You can have an entire function in x if it just has x's and no y's. Because if you take the partial with respect to y, this part will go away. So this go away. So this could be so this so you could have possibly a a, a function involving x right here as well. Okay. So now we take the kind of an antiderivative with respect to x and we're going to get, what is it, negative 
So that's this part right here, and that's the X. Um, we're going back, it goes back to sine, right? And it could have a likewise it could have a function involving y. Okay, so the thing is to the thing is to make these equal to each other and come up with something that, that that's equal to that and equal to that. And that would be negative um who put that to there? The gremlins probably again. Okay, e to the negative e to the two y sine two x. Because that's equal to that and it's equal to that. Okay, so that's going to be the imaginary part. So f of z would be the real part, which is this one, minus i e to the 2y sine 2x, minus i times this part here. Okay, so that's how you you do that problem. Okay, so while we're right here, I want to explore something else really quickly, and that is I'll, I'll pose a question here. Does there exist a um, a real function? such that u to the y cosine 2x. I this is a different one. There's no 2 here now. I took the 2 out. Plus i times z is holomorphic. So now this is a different question. So it's asking, does there exist a real function v? such that e to the 2, e to the y cosine 2x plus iv is holomorphic. So what we just did is we found such a f, right? We found such a v for this one. Okay, so for this u right here, this v right here, um, okay, so for this u, this v right here is, Make it so that this is holomorphic. It's entire, actually. Okay. So can we do the same thing with this one? So, um, what do you think? Anybody have any opinion? If I told you the answer is no, what do you think the fastest way to show that that? If I said, okay, the, the answer is no, you can't. What do you think the fastest way to show that you can't would be? Find the harmonic one. What's that? Show that U is not harmonic? Yeah, show that it's not harmonic. Yes, that would be it. Because, like, if that happens, if it's holomorphic, then U and V both have to be harmonic. Okay, likewise, if they're both, if, if you have a U that's harmonic, then you're going to be able to find a V. Okay. It just depends on what region you're harmonic in, as to how, as to how, as to where f is going to be holomorphic. Okay. But so the fastest way is to show that it's not harmonic. So um, if we go u x, what is that? Negative two e y 
equals sine flips. Yes. And then another derivative is going to give you. What's u y gonna, what's u y y gonna be? Take two part two parts of the vector respect to y, and what are you gonna get? This e y, it's the same thing. You get that right. This is the same thing, right? Okay. So if you go u x x plus u y y, then you're gonna get is that plus that now. Which ends up being my negative three e to the y cosine two x, which is not a zero. Well, it's zero for um, specific values of x, right? Where cosine of two x is equal to zero, but that's just like a few points here and there. So it's not going to ever be holomorphic. You know, you might be able to find something that's differentiable. You might be able to find the v such that this is differentiable at a few points here and there, but it's not, but it's just isolated points, so it's not going to ever be holomorphic. So the answer is no. You can't. Because um, if you could, then, then you would have to be a harmonic because of this. Okay. So let's look at um, number, the next page, let's see. And that is the most important thing here is this theorem here. So what the problem, the examples that we just did was the function V that we came up with. Um, the function V that we came up with. Uh, wait a minute, where is it? This function here, this is the harmonic conjugate of u. So this v is the harmonic conjugate of this one. Okay, now they're not actually, they're actually not necessarily going to be harmonic conjugates of each other. So like with a with a complex number, it's harmonic. I mean, it's conjugate is going to be the conjugate. They're going to be conjugates of each other. So if one's a conjugate of the other, then the other's going to be conjugate of the first one. But um, for with this one, it doesn't necessarily go back and forth. So um, the harmonic conjugate of v. The v will have a harmonic conjugate, but it's not necessarily going to be this one. Okay, so that's how that, so that's just the, so if it's harmonic, then there exists a harmonic function such that that's all holomorphic. So that's kind of just going back the other way. And v is called the harmonic conjugate of u. Okay. Here's a here's a good interesting uh, corollary. Harmonic functions are infinitely differentiable. That means you can take as many partials as you want. Okay, because they're gonna be they're gonna be the real part of a holomorphic function, and we know that holomorphic functions are infinitely differentiable. Okay, um, I'm going to skip section 6.2 and just go straight to some of the homework exercises. Okay, so I want to show, I want to do like number, 
uh, number six, okay? So we're, what we're supposed to basically show is that f is holom if f is holomorphic and non-zero in G, then the natural log of the modulus is harmonic in G, okay? So let me come back here. I guess I should keep the same color, um, number six. So F is holomorphic. In G. And do you want to show that if it's holomorphic in G, then this function right here. Oh wait, this is non-zero in G. It's also non-zero in G. That's imp that's really important too. Yeah, you want to show that this is harmonic in G. Okay, so here's how you can go about doing this. Um. You could try, you could say, okay, F is U plus IV and then um, U and V are, are both harmonic and I satisfy the kosher Riemann equations and then um, calculate what this should be. This would be the natural logarithm of U squared plus the square root of U squared plus V squared and maybe even pull the square root out. So that's like one half I'm just I'm just showing you. You could kind of go this route. You could say f is u plus iv, and then you you can like say okay, the kosher Riemann equations are going to be satisfied, and then maybe they'll look, look that comes into into play later, and then the log of this is equal to the natural log of the square root of u squared plus v squared, but that's just one half the natural logarithm of u squared plus v squared. And then maybe take, maybe call that one double, maybe call that one capital U, and then ca find a capital U of xx and capital U of yy and go that route and show that, show that they're, that's equal to zero somehow. Calculate what those are in terms of this and then use these somehow to show that that's zero. Okay, that's one route that you could go, but it's gonna be easier if you argue this way. Um, let, G of, let G of C be equal to the logarithm of, um, f of z. So we know that f of z is holomorphic and and non-zero in g, right? So the logarithm, take the logarithm um, is also holomorphic where it's also holomorphic where f is where where you're not taking a log of zero, right? Okay, so therefore G is the composition of two holomorphic functions. Okay, therefore G is uh, holomorphic. So G is holomorphic on on G in G on capital G. Well, I guess the small G might have been a bad choice, but that's the difference between capital G, so we're fine. Okay, but you also know that what's the what's the real part of the log of G? Okay. 
true, but yeah, it's the natural log of f of x y. Plus i. Okay, so you could say, where's what's the theorem? Um, what's the theorem we just went over here? Proposition 6.3, if f is holomorphic, if u plus iv, f equals u plus iv is holomorphic, then u and vi are, v are, are harmonic in g. So that's proposition 6.3. Oops, that's not the one. Okay, and then we're done. So that's what we set up. We're always supposed to do prove that the natural logarithm of the modulus of f of x, y is harmonic in G. And we basically just showed that. <laughs>